right, big week doodling with purpose fans. We are about to finish the single consonant hieroglyphs, which means officially at the end of this video, you are going to be writing your name. At least that's going to be your homework assignment. You're going to look back at all of the glyphs that we've learned to date and figure out how you can piece them together to create the sounds for your names. As an example, take a look at this. So here are different ways people have written their name using hieroglyphs. Now, again, they may not be correct the way the Egyptians would do it, and that's not important right now. What's important is just basing out the sounds so you can spell out your name. And you also might be asking why all of these names are surrounded by a little circle or an oval. Well, this oval is called a cartouche, which is a circle, essentially, that surrounded the names of important people in ancient Egypt, notably pharaohs and you know the, the rulers of different cities. This was something that when the French under Napoleon were, well, invading Egypt in the 1780s, 1790s during the Napoleonic Wars, which is also when the Rosetta Stone was located, the French soldiers were seeing all of these circles on the walls of different temples, and honestly, they didn't know what they were. They just saw them as circles. The word cartouche is actually French for bullet. It's just the French word for bullet. And again, the reason is, is because these French soldiers in Egypt, well, they thought that these circles looked like their bullets. This is what a French bullet looked like at that time period. So the reason we call these cartouches is we're basically just calling them French bullets because that's what the soldiers at the time when they were invading Egypt thought they looked like. And even now today, we, we, we call Egyptian names with a circle around them a cartouche. Crazy, right? Hey, stranger things have happened. All right. So you're going to know enough to, uh, to put together your to-do list and put together your name by the end of this video. And with that, as per usual, let's jump into our review of the glyphs that we learned last week so we can ensure we're mastering them. All right, so if you recall, first we did the sh sound, sh, which is a pool of water. So it's a rectangle, kind of with lines down the middle, diagonal. And then we did t, the hill, line with a circle. And then finally the tz sound, which is the rope with the two circles and a line, which I don't know why that got cut off in my video of me doing it, but it did. So I'm going to show you an image, and I think that should suffice. All right, with that behind us, let's jump into the new glyphs that we're going to do this week, rounding out the single consonants. The first one we're going to start with is the chick. And no, definitely not that hot chick. We're talking more like this chick. Well, actually, we're not talking about this chick either. We're talking more this chick, a quail chick, which was a bird in ancient Egypt. The quail chick is the w or the u sound, like w or o. It can be kind of both. Uh, you'll see it quite a lot because it's also used to show small or evil. Uh, for some reason, small was evil. I don't know why, but it shows up a lot in hieroglyphs as that symbol. Pretty easy to draw. Start with the beak, like the vulture. Go around for the back body, the front body, two legs, something to stand on, and an eye. Again, start with the beak, the back body. Now the front body curves up, two legs, something to stand on, and an eye. One more time. We'll start with the beak. We'll do the back body, the front body, two legs, something to stand on, and a beak. And that's your quail chick. Next up, we have our Y are double reeds. And as I mentioned, when we did the letter I, it's basically the same thing. The letter I is just a single reed. So since we already know how to do the letter I, we're basically just going to double that, and we're going to do the letter Y. Pretty simple, right? And again, this is a different letter. You'll see it used both, you know, the single and double is the difference between I and Y. All right, so we already did this one. It's candy cane down, back down, and connect. Again, candy cane down, straight down, and connect. One more time. So see how candy cane down, straight down, connect. Candy cane down, straight down, 
curve and connect. And there's your Y, the double read. All right, next we have our spiraling shape. I don't know why I said it like that, but I just felt like it. So the spiral is also a W sound. It's, it's kind of our first alternative sound, and we're going to get into the alternates in a moment. Uh, but you'll, you'll see this quite often. It's also used to symbolize rope. Um, but it's basically your half spiral. Simple as that. Start in the middle, curve around, and that's it. Start in the middle and curve around. Now sometimes you'll see the tail end loop all the way around like this. And that's acceptable too. Pretty one, easy one to do. All right, are we lost in our spiraling shape yet? Are we learning our hieroglyphics? I think we are. All right, so now that we have made it through the spiral shape W, we now basically know all of the single consonants. And it's a good time to start making flashcards. This is a great way to learn your glyphs is to basically do your flashcards with the letter, what they are, and drawing it. It's a great exercise in addition to just drawing it over and over and over again. And as I said in the beginning of the video, we now know all of the basic consonant sounds. There's going to be some alternates we'll get to, but your assignment for this week is to figure out how to write your name, and hey, why not draw a circle around it, turn it into a cartouche, because you now know what a cartouche is as well. So see if you could do that. Go back, look at all the letters we've learned, and see if you can piece together the proper way to spell out your name in Egyptian hieroglyphs. And now you could, you know, surprise people at parties and impress potential dates. I don't know. I don't know what you would do with this other than have fun and doodle with purpose. But hey, it is a cool party trick. All right. Next week, we're going to talk about a few of the alternates, which is essentially there's a few glyphs that are the same. They're, they're single consonants, but they're different glyphs for the same single consonants. Like, for example, this one here is the crown of Lower Egypt, and it's an alternate way of doing the letter N. It's a little more complicated, which is why we're doing it at the end versus the uh, wavy line version of N. And that's it. You now, uh, you're now you done with your single consonants minus a few alternates for next week. So write your name, do some cartouching, and I'll see you here next week for another episode of Doodling with Purpose. Learn your glyphs. Thanks, everybody.